Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install the RED Cinema camera onto the Dream Crane 3S for professional usage. Alright, let's first talk about what we have on the table. On the left side, we have the tools and the RED touch monitor. Then we have the components that we need for the camera package. Followed up with the wireless focus system. Then our gimbal, Dream Crane 3S. Up next, we have the HDMI monitor with its mounting solution then a professional wireless transmission kit and lastly our wireless focus control unit now let's first make our camera package ready here we have a classic red dsmc2 cinema camera we're going to attach a city lens on there this is a Arri ultra prime 60 mm lens battery wise i would definitely recommend smaller size v-mount batteries so in this case an fx line nano one battery so in the camera, we should have mostly all the settings ready before we put it on the gimbal. And that includes also roughly what you think the wide band is going to be, and also the frame rate, and etc. But beside that, also we should go to Menu, Monitoring, Monitors, HDMI, and make sure the mode is on Overlay, and the overlay is standard red. Beside that, we choose the resolution style in ADP, 60Hz, and Red Gamma 4 as a display preset. Then we go to HDSDI and do exactly the same. We go for mode overlay, overlay standard red, resolution 1080p, frequency 60 hertz, and display preset red gamma 4. Then let's go back to the main menu and then settings, setup, communication. We go to Wi-Fi and make sure it's on ad hoc, channel 1, WPA2, a user defined password. And we'll detach our red touch monitor. Now we'll continue building our camera package and attach the quick release plate of Dreaming Gimbal on there. We'll take the two screws provided in the box, align them on and attach. Make sure they're very tight. Flipping up to this side, we'll attach our wireless focus system. So here we can use the Dream focus module. Or if you already have your own one, you can use your wireless focus system too. So here we have a small rig one quarter screw to 50 mm rod adapter. We'll attach it here. Then we'll attach our rods roughly like this and lock on this side. Then we'll attach the motor, aligning with the gear and lock. Then we'll connect the power cables and we'll attach the DTAP side to this side. So now this battery will power the camera and also the AirPro 3 unit. Now attaching ND filters. For that, I really highly recommend lightweight matte boxes, especially the ones like Wooden Camera Zip Box. They have four versions. Choose your right lens diameter and attach my ND or other needed filters. But in this case, I'm going to show the worst case scenario where your client is on set and you cannot wait and you have to do that shot somehow and make it possible. So we won't have a matte box here and we will try to attach our ND filter onto this lens with some tricks. And the trick is literally just duct tape. It is not the most elegant and recommendable solution, but this will help you in a pinch. We'll take the duct tape and fold it three times, like so. Now we're going to start aligning it on the edge of the lens and wrap around it. and then try to fold inside a little bit. Now we'll take our filter and attach it firmly. Then we will make sure that it's also secured on both sides. And we'll do the same also for the other side. All right, now it's pretty secure. This is going to the part where we're going to install the extension arm. This you shouldn't do frequently back and forth. After removing the four screws, we take it out very carefully. You'll see that there's a cable here, so don't tear it up. 
This is the extension arm component we're gonna be using. We place it on like a Lego. And then with this one, go over and attach it carefully. Now, please be very careful. Now there are no screws helping to stabilize this, but we'll have a quick look on the other side where we can see there's a cable hanging out and we'll deal with it with this cover. This is a sliding cover and we will have to take off this part again, just a little bit, very careful. And now we can use this one. We slide it in here. There are two sides, so make sure the wider one goes inside. You'll feel it. And then reattach this part. Now we can stabilize this arm with some screws. I will just put them roughly in place because my first goal is to roughly stabilize it. Okay, now that we have everything in place, let's tighten the screws. Now the camera package is ready, we're going to put it onto the gimbal. It can stand on its own, but when you put on expensive cameras, I recommend to follow professional procedure and attach a sandbag for safety. Now you don't need to worry at all. Let's put on our camera package. Always do remember, even if it has a safety lock, always make sure it's very well locked. Now we'll set up an HDMI monitor for the operator, so he or she can see the framing. I'll definitely recommend something similar like this, a monitor arm that is way more sturdier than a magic arm that goes flimsy back and forth after a while of shooting. The cool thing about this one, it doesn't need screws. You can literally just screw it on by hand. And here's our HDMI monitor. We'll attach a battery for it. So here we can use the Julian Focus module. The Julian one works, or if you already have one, you can use your own one too. Now one very important note is if you have a SDI monitor here, it's way better. But I only have here an HMI monitor for demonstration. So for the output selection here on this side, we'll use the SDI to give our operator the image through an SDI to HMI converter cable. And then the image transmission will use the HMI out port to give the focus polar the wireless focus feed. Do remember, if you have a very thin and flexible SDI cable and a good SDI monitor, you don't need to do this step. This is just for us to make sure we can connect to the operator's monitor. This SDI to HDMI converter also needs power, so we're going to provide power through this USB port on the RED camera. Then here we have a very lightweight, thin HDMI cable that will go to our field monitor. Now before continuing, let's make some cable management. Now the HDMI cable is actually not well placed. We'll see that it might tangle up in between. Now we'll make sure that with duct tape, we'll control its direction. This one, for example, is not well positioned. So we'll turn it around here and secure it like this. Up next, of course, our focus puller also needs to see the image. So now we're going to attach an image transmission unit on there. So for professional usage, we definitely want a solid wireless image transmission kit. But before attaching it, we need to give it some mounting solutions. In this case, this Julian relocation plate is perfect for that. We will get rid of one of the screws, which is the outside one. And we'll attach it right here. Next, we'll use a one quarter to cold true adapter and we'll attach it right here. Now we can put our wireless image transmitter on there. And we can see it does not affect with the axis. All right, for this one needs battery too, so we'll attach that. And also an HDMI cable will go through here and attach it right here. Now with this HDMI cable, you also want to make sure it does not get tangled in between. If you don't have enough cable ties, you can use duct tape. One last check if the cables are safe. And the good thing is now we can see here, if we turn it 360, you will see it won't hit any of the axes. That will give you way more confidence when operating with it. All right, now we're ready for balancing. First thing I will definitely recommend is on this side, we can see that there's a little bit of a gap and we'd want to try to keep it as condensed as possible. So let's just move that in a little bit. And now let's go through all each axis. It will be great if you have someone to help you on the other side to assist. 
So now let's turn on all the components. And while it gets signal, we will do a quick focus calibration. Let's also quickly set up our wireless focus unit. We have one beam on battery that will power the image transmission receiver, the monitor, and also the wireless focus wheel. As we can see, our wireless focus system works very well, very responsive. Now, one additional thing to mention. If you want to change some camera settings in the menu, there are some ways to do that right now. Either you have purchased a red camera that has a sidekick on there. With this sidekick control, you can turn the dial to go through the menus. But if you don't have the sidekick module, you can also use your phone. Go to settings, connect to your camera, in this case, our Weapon 130. Then we'll open up the app called Full Control. And now it will detect the camera. And here we can see we can access all the camera settings that we need. See, this is not the most elegant way of controlling the camera settings. Therefore, it's good to do it beforehand. And also why I've demonstrated like this is because most of the time from the rental houses, it comes like this. So if you do have a very lightweight red video signal cable though, definitely use that touch screen and replace it with this HDMI monitor. This will make your operation on this camera way more easier. All right, now that we have solved the most crucial part to focus, the operator can now take the camera and go wild. And in another tutorial, I will show how I specifically change my RED camera package in a way that I can access the menu very quick and easy and also do some other modifications to it to make my life easier with this gimbal and this RED camera package. And generally speaking, I'm super happy about it because this is really truly lightweight and you can do with these different modes so many cool creative shots. So yeah, what do you guys think? Definitely let us know in the comments below. <laughs>